Hi, I'm Dale Wright and you're watching Bird Matters, a video series about birds and the environment we share. Coming up in this episode, we're going to celebrate Father's Day for the birds and then we're also going to talk to a South African biologist, Garth Batchelor, and his work on crowned eagles. But first, so did you know Father's Day was first held on the 5th of July 1908, over a century ago. In 1907, there was a mining disaster in West Virginia that claimed the lives of 361 men. Um, many of the deceased were fathers. And so a lady named Grace Golden Clayton asked her pastor at the local church to have a special service honoring those deceased men. And women and children have been honoring fathers ever since. But you're probably wondering, what does all this have to do with birds? Well, we thought we'd honor all those hardworking fathers in the bird kingdom for their tireless and occasionally unusual contributions to parenthood. But of course, it all starts with courtship. We all know, no chemistry, no family. I think fathers deserve a special day of recognition just for this. And it's not really that far off from what we do in our world. Anyway, and here we have feeding time, courtesy of Dad. Take a look at these peregrine falcon chicks being fed by an attentive father. But I guess there's nothing really special in the hunting and bringing food back. It's only when we move on to some of the penguins that we take parenting and fatherhood to the next level. After mom lays the eggs, she heads off for a couple of months in search of food, leaving dad in the winter darkness holding the egg. And it doesn't end with the hatching. The fathers literally raise the babies during the first few months and with great care, as you can see in this video. At least that's the plan. And of course, we all know everything doesn't always go according to plan. Yep, there's definitely some good dad bonding going on there. But mom does eventually come home with food. About two months later? And what about the weaver bird? The prospective father spends so much time and effort building a home in the hope of attracting a mate, sometimes flying thousands of individual trips to weave a nest. And then, if she doesn't take him up on the offer, he trashes it. Rejection can be a bitter pill to swallow. So there are a few other human fathers we can also include, and one of which who's very well known to all of us is David Attenborough. He recently celebrated his 90th birthday, and is probably the founding father of increasing wildlife awareness through documentaries. And one of the lesser known fathers of modern biology, Alfred Russell Wallace, who in fact co-authored the theory of evolution by natural selection with Charles Darwin in the 19th century. But unlike Darwin, who was a staid country gentleman, Wallace preferred running around the tropics, sometimes near death with malaria, chasing the birds of paradise as Attenborough has done, and generally living an inspired and curious life. Oh, so he has a great idea for Father's Day, if you haven't got a gift already. What about giving Dad an annual membership to BirdLife South Africa? You won't get this cool jacket, but you will get six issues of a brilliant magazine, a monthly newsletter, and a chance to support bird conservation in South Africa. Whenever there's competition for resources between wildlife and humanity, wildlife is often the loser. So it's nice to be able to report on a story where it's a bit more of a win-win situation. We caught up with Garth Batchelor, who's telling us about his research on crowned eagles, monitoring their breeding and making landowners more aware of their presence. Crowned eagles are one of the biggest eagles in South Africa. They haven't got the longest wings, but they're probably the most powerful eagle. Uh, they've been known to take the biggest prey of any eagle in South Africa. And why I'm interested in them is because they live along the escarpment of the eastern province of Mpumalanga and they occur in forestry areas and also very little is known about them. Uh, fortunately at, the, at present uh, they're not threatened to a big ex extent in, in Mpumalanga, our province, but uh, throughout Africa their ranges have declined incredibly. Uh, they have just been declared a vulnerable species in South Africa so we are concerned about them but our population fortunately is secure. 
But nevertheless, we're trying to determine the number of nests along the escarpment and also work out a strategy for conserving our population before it declines. Uh, we've got a number of big timber companies growing exotic plantations uh, along the escarpment where our highest rainfall is. The rainfall is about a thousand millimeters. So it's ideal for eucalyptus and also pine trees. And the eagles live, as I say, along the escarpment, largely in ravines and natural forest in the, in the plantations. But the plantations are providing food and prey uh, for these eagles. So they've got secure habitat in the ravines where they put their nests up, uh, but they are feeding quite to a large extent in the plantations, taking mostly uh, antelope, 70% of their diet of their pop of their prey are antelope, mostly small grey diker, red diker, but they'll even take prey up to the size of bushbuck, which is 20 to 30 kilograms. So they're pretty formidable uh, raptors. They also occur in the bush felt where there are large trees along drainage lines, and there they feed mostly on impala and in the mountainous areas, Clip Springer. Uh, fortunately, the farmers in these areas are, are pretty comfortable in having these eagles on their properties. And we have managed to speak to the landowners. They are conserving their nests and the, and the eagles. So all in all, it's a, a very happy story. The forest timber companies are looking after their eagles and very proud to have them. And so far, the landowners are also supporting the project and looking after their nests and offspring and stopping persecution. The biggest potential risk at the moment are what we call emerging farmers in, in South Africa, especially in our area where a lot of new farming enterprises starting and they're starting to farm with goats because they're easy animals to, to grow, uh, but they're very easy prey for crowned eagles especially the lambs, and I suspect this is going to become more and more of a problem in the future. Cool, well, that's it for this episode of Bird Matters. Don't forget to hit onto our YouTube channel and hit subscribe. We'll see you next time, and happy Father's Day.